Welcome to the Upper Room Chapel. I'm Lilia Ramirez, Administrative Program Manager of IMEAS Ministries. It is with joy that I welcome you to this holy space. Wherever and whenever we gather, we come together to pray with and on behalf of the world. As staff of the Upper Room and partners with you in this journey, we are so honored to have this time to pray with you. As we gather today, we find ourselves in the midst of ongoing changes and challenges around the world. In times like this, we turn our hearts and minds toward our loving, creating, and recreating God, who desires to meet us right where we are, in this moment, whether we are feeling joyful, sad, or confused, God is here. So as we begin this time of prayer and reflection, let us open our hearts and minds to the presence of the Holy One. I invite you to take some deep breaths. Breathe in the love of God and exhale any tension or worry. verses for today are Isaiah chapter 40 verses 27 and 31. You people of Israel say, God pays no attention to us. God doesn't care if we are treated unjustly. But how can you say that? But those who trust the Lord will find new strength. They will be strong like eagles soaring upward on wings. They will walk and run without getting tired. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, I don't have any reason to brag about preaching the good news. Preaching is something God told me to do, and if I don't do it, I am doomed. For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. 2020 was a difficult year. And so far, 2021 has not shown signs of improvement. In just one month, we continue to experience the impacts of COVID-19 and other illnesses, death of loved ones, shortage of the vaccine, new virus mutations, economic problems, structural and racism and poverty, personal and family challenges as well. For sure, during our lives, we have experienced moments similar to those that the writer describes in Isaiah 40. When the people of Israel during the exile were in a desperate situation, they felt that God did not care about them. The author rebukes the people of Israel for their distrust. He is talking about how those who trust in the Lord can do three things, soaring, walking, and running. Those three actions imply movement. In life, when we face problems, we cannot remain paralyzed. We need to proceed holding God's hands, either soaring, walking, or running towards the solution. And you can be sure 
that when you feel tired, God will give you new strength. The strength you need to face problems in life does not depend on our strength or on how, de- how young or fit we are or on our economic status or how intelligent we are. Our strength depends on our trust in the Lord. The promise in Isaiah 40 doesn't say, those who trust in the Lord won't have problems. No. Rather, the promise is that those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. So what is the purpose to find new strength? To live meaningless lives? No. God renews our strength so we can preach the gospel, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9. I am compelled to preach the gospel. Like Paul, we are compelled to preach too. Maybe you think that preaching the gospel, it is the responsibility of pastors only. When people accept Jesus Christ as their savior, they commit themselves to, com- to proclaim the gospel, to comply with his commandments and to imitate Jesus. The Super Bowl will be played next Sunday in the United States. It is a big event for those who like sports. It is the annual championship game of the National Football League. A player cannot say before the game, oh, you know what? I don't feel like playing today. I would rather go home. If a player is part of the team, he or she has to play. Something similar happens when you accept Christ in your life. You become a part of the Jesus Christ team. And you have to play. That is to preach the gospel. It is not a matter of wanting to do it. It is that you have to do it. Preaching the gospel, it is to share the good news of God's love. And God's love includes peace and justice. It is living the message of Jesus Christ, making it a reality in our lives. Incarnate it for the transformation of the world so that the society in which we live will be something similar to the kingdom of God. So everybody can live in dignity, reflecting God's love peace, and justice. Remember that you are not alone. In the midst of your problems, God is with you. God will renew your strength to succeed and share the good news of God's love. As we walk together today, let us offer our prayers to God for wisdom to teach and guide us, for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, for peace, justice, and freedom among all people on the earth, for a just and merciful end to the pandemic of COVID-19, systemic racism, and domestic abuse around the world. We also pray for equitable distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine, for those suffering physically, emotionally, spiritually, and economically, for those feeling lost and alone, for those who are mourning, 
the death of loved ones, the death of dreams, the death of hope. We join our voices with all the saints and angels of God. Let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. And remember, you are beloved and you are not alone. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>